With practice at exercise 5.5 random lines, we are going to write a method called random line and it's going to print between five and 10 random strings of letters, one per line. Then each string should have a random length of up to 80 characters. So there's a couple of different things that we're gonna have to do to actually write for this. First thing that we're gonna do is make our header. It's going to be a public static. We're just printing, not returning anything. So it's going to be of type void. We're going to have our name, which is random lines. We don't have a parameter. So we just have our two parentheses. And then we have this beginning brace right here. Now we're going to go into our function. So we know that we're going to want to deal with random things. So what we're going to do is make an instance of the random class. We're going to do random. We'll call it R and set it equal to a new random. And we're going to end this line. This creates our instance. And now that we've created the instance, we can now use the random. If you want more info about random, there's previous videos where in the description below the like button, we have kind of a how to on how to use the random class. But for now, we are going to assume that we know this and we are going to want something that is between five and 10 because we need to write our method that prints between five and 10 random strings of letters. So, the first thing that we need is we're going to need a for loop. And this for loop is going to run as long as there is um, some value between five and 10. We need to first get this value. So we're going to do int and we will call this the start val. And this is going to be our starting value. We're going to set it equal to a r dot next int. And this is a function in the random class. And inside of here, uh, we know that we are starting at five, so we're gonna have to do five plus outside of here. We know we want to end at 10, so we're gonna go up to 11, but not include it, meaning that inside of here, we're gonna have six, because we have five plus six, our upper bound is 11, and we don't include it. Now we're gonna use our for loop. We're gonna have our arbitrary int a is equal to zero, and it's going to run as long as it's less than our start val. And then we are going to do a plus plus, so that we can eventually end in this. Now we're going to be inside of the for loop. Now we need to, um, we're gonna, we, we've discovered how many times that we're gonna do this. So let's say that it, it runs five. It gives us the value of five right here. So we're gonna do this five times. Now we need to see how many different letters are going to be inside of these uh, rows. And, or these are columns, or not, yeah, these rows. So in doing this, every single time it's going to be different. So what we're going to need to do is we are going to make another value. We'll do int and we'll call this row val. And we're going to set it equal. And this can be up to 80 characters, right? So this is just going to be r dot next int it goes up to, but does not include 81. Now we're going to have a for loop and this for loop, it's going to, we're going to have int b is equal to zero. And we're going to run this as long as b is less than our row value. So this is how many times it's going to uh, go through. And then we're gonna just do our B plus plus. So we can end this header just like this and be inside of it. Now inside of here is where we're going to print. We're gonna have a system dot out dot print and this is all gonna be on the same line. So we're just gonna end it up print. Now inside of here, we need to print out all of these letters. Well, there's no string that we've created yet. But we can, a super easy way to do this is to make a string that holds all these values. We're going to call this string alphabet, and we're going to set equal to the following A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, and then W, X, Y, and Z. Then we can end this line, and we can just get the indexes of this string and print them out. The indexes will be grabbed from uh, the random value that we're about to get inside of here. So we're going to do alphabet dot char at or character at, and this is going to get this, this is going to get the character at a specific index. We need to pass in that index. So the index that we're going to pass in is some random number or right, or some random, some random number that we are going to get. So we're going to do r dot next int. And we, we need to go up to some value because we don't want to go out of bounds of our string because this goes on for infinity right now. 
We know it starts at zero. We know that there are uh, 20, I think, six characters in the alphabet. And so we're going to go from zero to um, 26. But since it goes from zero, I think it goes like zero to, there's basically 27 in here. If you count that, uh, I think it's like that. And so we would put 26 inside of here. Um, if that's not right, we can go back and fix it later. We can end this line. We can end this for loop. I can correct my syntax here. And after this for loop executes, we're going to just print a new line because we want to be on the new line. So this is just to print a new line. This is all for this row. So let's go over it really quickly. We have this first random value that we're going to get, and that's going to determine how many rows we have here because we can print from five to 10 rows. Now in this for loop, we are going to see, and this is included, all of this right here. It's going to see how long our actual row is. And then the line below that is just going to make a new line. So that is going to be it for this for loop. And we can try running it once we close our method. So we can click submit here. It's going to contact the server and run all the tests and we've passed four out of four tests. Now I've noticed something and um, it's, it's super key to note some things. In here, we have this right here. This is all kind of together. Same thing with this. Inside of here, this dot char at, we pass in our random. We don't store it in anything. The difference is, is that uh, every time we run this line, we're gonna get a new random value, which is what we want. Every time we go through these for loops, we go into the header, run the code, and we go back to the header to check our condition. Well, if we were just to plug this straight into here and not store it in a value, it would change every single time, and this could possibly run on forever. So you don't want to do that, and that's just something I noted that could be misunderstood. If you understood that, that's pretty great. And so that's it for practice exercise 5.5 random lines.